Hi everyone, um, my name is Yoshiko Iwai and I'm an international student from Japan um, here to talk a little bit about scholarship applications. So for brief history, um, I, like I said, was born in Japan. My family, um, my parents, my, my younger brother are still there. Um, I lived in California for a little bit and then moved back um, to Japan before coming back for high school where I went to boarding school for dance and then I went to the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor um, and studied dance and neuroscience. Um, where sort of I realized that writing was something I was passionate about and in particular writing about the arts and sciences. So I moved to New York City after that um, and I got my MS in Narrative Medicine and MFA in Creative Nonfiction Writing from Columbia University. And finally, um, I'm in med, med school um, at UNC Chapel Hill. So um, it's great to, to finally be here, um, especially as an international student, getting into medical school is a long, arduous process, um, particularly because of financial aid. Um, and I was very, very fortunate to be the 2021 recipient of the Women in STEM Grand Prize. So I would start out by saying that um, organizations like Empower Financing are huge, huge um, sort of pockets of opportunity to go to. I think one thing that has been helpful for me is uh, making sure that I have an organized place that I can go to um, that has a list of um, different scholarships, grants, um, also like institutional or university-based um, merit scholarships that I can apply for or even, you know, essay awards, writing awards, whatever, research project awards um, that you can apply to. And I think having sort of a running document, even if you're not eligible at that moment, but being aware of future things that you might be eligible as soon as you hear about something from a professor or a fellow student or an international student um, who's done something in the past that you think you might be eligible for, I think um, it's very easy to lose track of opportunities and, and miss them. And so especially as an international student, when um, the financial aid you can get and places you can go to are so, so limited, making sure that you are maximizing all those opportunities is really important. And then next, I would say utilizing the financial aid office um, and international student scholars office at your university is probably the next best place to go um, at every step in my career. I've been very lucky to receive merit scholarships from um, college to grad school to, to now med school and truly wouldn't be in the U.S. continuing my education if it weren't for those. Um, and I think also at every point I was in a role of negotiating um, for more money and trying to explain that as an international student, here are my circumstances and often realizing that um, many people that I was talking to had, you know, A, never either talked to an international student directly or B, just simply wasn't aware of the restrictions. And I think in those circumstances, um, whether it's picking up the phone and calling somebody and telling them your story and, you know, what you can do to negotiate for a little bit more support so that you can go to this program that you're very passionate about for XYZ reasons, I think also being very specific is extremely helpful. And then writing emails um, or, you know, sending sort of personal statement like essays about yourself um, can also be very helpful. I think especially for med school, but also for college, um, I very frequently sort of put together essays or, or short letters um, about why I was particularly passionate about the program that I wanted to go to and you know what other opportunities I had or what, what other um, programs that I had that were offering me maybe more money or, um, or a different um, you know, financial package and trying, trying to leverage that towards my, to my advantage, um, I think is something that, especially as an international student, you need to be savvy about and sort of take advantage of. Um, and just being aware that, you know, the worst a program can ever say is no. And so it doesn't hurt to send a thoughtfully crafted email to somebody who might listen. I think in many, many cases, um, the people that I've spoken with either on the phone or over email have been so welcoming. Um, and even if they aren't able to provide um, additional aid, have at least been, um, you know, then mindful of my circumstances. And when something does open up, you know, they email me in the future. Um, and I think sort of one thing can, can lead to another. Um, and then as much as you can, just networking with people at your institution, um, especially other international students, especially international students who are one step ahead of you in your career. So um, I've reached out to, you know, whether it was pre-med students who were a couple years ahead of me, 
people who are already in med school who are on the same F1 visa as me, people who are residents, people who are now attending physicians. Um, and I think hearing about what worked for them and what didn't, I think um, those are probably the best nuggets of information and insight you're going to get. So I would um, also recommend getting coffee with as many people as you can. Now, luckily it's much easier. So, you know, um, trying to find their, their website or their university address, whatever it might be. Again, the worst they can say is no. Um, and in most cases, I find that people who are in similarly challenging circumstances are very supportive and enthusiastic about supporting others in their shoes. Um, so reaching out to, to other people and now in pandemic times, um, and probably after this too, um, I doubt Zoom will, will disappear. And so I think um, trying to, to meet people and, and learn from other people's experiences is also very helpful. I hope this very short video was helpful to you and best of luck on your journey.